What if I told you that changing your mindset is the key to success? And that's why I got rid of toxic mindsets. Welcome back. Changing my mindset allowed me to succeed. Yes, that's a game changer. And a lot of people think that they need to have a certain skill, set or talent in order to be successful. But that's not always the case. Success comes down to your mindset. And if you're willing to change your perspective and take massive action, then anything is possible. I want to give you a free gift. I want to help you take your life to the next level. So please make sure to download my checklist, the 17 powerful keys to unlocking happiness and fulfillment in your life right now. Use the link right below. But there are a couple of mindset obstacles we have to overcome to, to, to reach our full potential. So let's look at, at a couple of obstacles. Obstacle number one, you have the wrong mindset. You know, God wants to do new things with your life. As he presents his plans to you, he will give you dreams that may overwhelm you. And by the way, if you've not watched it, there's a previous video about the 10x vision. So go have it a look. It will appear somewhere here. It's so important to have a big vision, but that's not enough. You need to have the right mindset and um, it may overwhelm you. And they will force you to trust in God rather than your own strength. If you're not ready to launch yourself with a leap of faith, you'll stay on the launch pad and you will not achieve your mood shot. To live the life God wants to give you and the one you are longing for, you need to adopt the right mindset. And to quote Steve Magnus, an expert on health and human performance, Mindset matters. The lens through which we analyze the world influences everything. When Peter received his visions from God, he felt overwhelmed, but he was ready to embrace the change. He did not hold on to his usual customs and you too must be willing to let go of your routine, get ready for the new things God has planned you. Because God asked Peter to eat food he had never eaten before. He could have said, no, I will not do it. But he was ready for the new thing that God was about to do. So it comes down to adopting what we call a growth mindset. And in the words of Carol S. Dweck, people with a fixed mindset, those who believe that abilities are fixed, are less likely to flourish than those with a growth mindset. And Simon Sinek said it well. He believes in the importance of adopting a winning mindset too. He said, leading with an infinite mindset in, a, in an infinite game really does move us in a better direction. Groups that adopt an infinite mindset enjoy vastly higher levels of trust cooperation and innovation and all the subsequent benefits. Because of maintaining an open mind, Peter flourished and he accepted the new thing God was doing with the early church. And when the conservatives of the church criticized him for eating with Cornelius, a Roman, a pagan, somebody who was not Jew, he said, if God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? What a powerful statement. Peter's growth mindset enabled him to see what other people couldn't and allowed him to help them understand God's plan. Alina Rutroska, the CEO of the Leaders Press, she said, the greatest weapon in any entrepreneurial arsenal is not money. No, it's mindset. You have to have the right mindset. Now here's obstacle number two. You believe as a Christian, you should not seek success. 
And you know, for the first 10 years or so after graduating from university, I believed I should not focus on my professional success. I actually thought that success was bad, that this was not God's will. I thought God would not like it if I earned too much money. So I adhere to the motto, I don't live to work, I work to live. Misinterpreting it actually to justify not being as successful as I could. But then gradually I came to understand what success as a Christian really meant. If you think as a Christian we shouldn't pursue earthly riches and recognition, you are right. Jesus said, do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. There is nothing wrong with being humble. After all, Jesus became the ultimate example of humility when he took the form of a servant. But what we must carefully distinguish is the difference between humility, which Miriam Webster defines as the freedom from pride or arrogance, and false modesty, merely pretending not to want wealth or recognition. Being humble means that you are seeing yourself rightly, not lowly, and surrender your rights for the sake of others. But there is nothing wrong with success either. In fact, the Bible mentions success many times. In the book of Joshua, it says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then, you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. The book of Proverbs says, in everything you do, put God first and he will direct you and crown your efforts with success. So God does want us to be successful. Therefore, the question we must ask ourselves is, how does God define success. After reading the Gospels and the book of Acts, I get the feeling that God wants his mission here on earth to take off. So he wants this mission to be successful because he painstakingly prepared the disciples and then sent the helper, the Holy Spirit, to provide them with optimal conditions to excel. There is no hint of him playing it safe or avoiding success. Instead, he wanted to restore everything and all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. In the same way, God wants your life to have the biggest impact possible. As Paul said, brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind me and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So Paul dedicated his life to winning the prize of truly answering God's call. He didn't play it safe either. He wanted success. He wanted to win the race. I've competed in many long distances races in my life and I can tell that you must seek success to do well. Likewise in our walk with Christ, we must strive to follow his lead with excellence. I encourage you to adopt a godly view of success. What would this type of success look like in your business? How could you achieve it? If we truly follow Jesus' formula for success, we forego personal recognition and focus instead on saving people and restoring creation. As Paul concludes, to him be glory forever. If our success gives all the glory to God, it is healthy. If we pursue personal recognition, we adopt mistaken or we mistakenly adopt this world's values. The third obstacle is you have negative thoughts and self-talk. 
So stop for a minute and jot down what you're saying to yourself right now. Are your thoughts kind and encouraging or harsh and demeaning? I invite you to take an honest assessment of your self-talk because doing so has the power to change your trajectory. And Mahatma Gandhi said the following, your beliefs become your thoughts, your thoughts become your words and your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits, your habits become your values, your values become your destiny. If you continually tell yourself, I don't have what it takes, you can always be certain that you will not succeed. But if you believe you deserve a great life, you probably will achieve it. But if you don't believe that you deserve a great life, you will sabotage it and you will not manage to improve your situation. So you must improve your inner narrative to experience a positive outcome. But how do you do this? To quote Benjamin Hardy, first you want to change your environment to change your mindset. Begin visualizing and imagining your desired future. Affirm powerfully to yourself that you're going to achieve that future. This means you sometimes have to fake it before you feel it. And when God promoted Joshua to lead the Hebrews, the once bold man actually panicked and told himself that he wasn't qualified to take on such a big responsibility. God not only encouraged Joshua, but he also told him how to overcome his negative thoughts. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. As Joshua meditated on God's word day in and day out, his thoughts became more positive and he realized that God was with him. And then God said, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And as a consequence, he became confident and bold. And Joshua lived a spectacular life, beating 31 kings for the glory of God. And Joshua's daily practice of meditation altered his inner dialogue and eventually his trajectory of life. Instead of listening to his doubts and giving in when he was afraid, he vanquished his negative thoughts with God's help. The fourth obstacle is this. Your values don't align with God's. God wants you to be successful. Therefore, achievements in your job, investments, or other ventures are not wrong, as long as your values are congruent with God's. Your intrinsic motivation must be putting God and others first and not personal glorification. And Paul encourages us to do everything in love. He understood that you needed to be on your guard. Because we easily drift and sooner than we think our values stop aligning with God's. To quote the author of Proverbs who said, People may be right in their own eyes, but the Lord examines their heart. You find a myriad of Christ following successful people in business, politics, education and arts and media. And bas basketball hall of famer, and the co-founder founder of the NBA's uh, Orlando Magic, Magic, I think, and he's also a motivational speaker. Pat Williams, he wrote in his biography, the legendary UCLA um, basketball coach Wooden. By the way, I highly recommend that book, Coach Wooden, amazing book. He said, Coach was the same man regardless of circumstances. He was consistent. His walk matched his talk. Coach Wooden espoused God's values, holding on to his seven life principles. And that was the secret of his tremendous success. The man with a value system from another era put more importance into serving others than building his personal success. Coach's humble spirit and his grateful attitude are truly rooted in his faith in God. 
To create a solid spiritual foundation, you must align your values with God's and promote such principles as generosity, serving the poor, and a willingness to embrace long-term rewards, if not eternal ones. Just start small, one step at a time. Develop a habit of regular giving to your church, to your charity, organization. Align your values to God's value. And, and the next time someone asks if, if you have a spare change, give it. Give it. Obstacle number five. You have the wrong vision. To fulfill God's vision for your life, you must first fully comprehend what it is that he wants you to do. If you have the wrong vision, it will act like a faulty GPS, guiding you to some other destination. Imagine if the computers guiding the Apollo 11 rocket had been programmed incorrectly. That would have been fatal. The astronauts would have never made it to the moon and back. Never. And in the Gospels we read that the disciples initially had the wrong vision of their intended ministry. They thought Jesus was going to be a military leader and guide them in a revolt against the evil Romans. Although Jesus explained their true mission to them many times, using parables to clearly explain his intent, they still did not understand what they were supposed to do. <laughs> it wasn't until the disciples received the Holy Spirit on Pentecost that they knew they were tasked with spreading the good news throughout the world. Once they comprehended the correct vision of their ministry, they were able to achieve it. So having the correct vision for your life is vital to you if you want to achieve it. And as self-help guru and author Napoleon Hill said, whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. And this is what the latest science of future self concludes. Research shows that the more connected you are to your own future self, the wiser decisions you make here and now. And here is the challenge. You must be clear about what God has planned for you to accomplish to achieve it. So thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure to grab my free checklist right below here. And thank you for your subscribing, for your likes, and I love reading your comments. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next one.